Okay, so yeah, we're not going to be um, placing any orders for watches today, but guess what? We're going to go ahead and make a order bot. So this bot is going to be very basic for what we start off with right now, but it's going to ask someone what they want to do, like what they want to order actually. And um, then we'll be able to take a pizza order. And for right now, this bot is just going to go ahead and be able to um, accept the size of the pizza, right? So we could do more things like ingredients and when do you want it delivered, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, just to get the idea of, okay, we're gonna go ahead and solicit some input from somebody. And actually we wanna like, we're gonna make it so that um, the bot only accepts like a small, medium and large pizza size, okay? So um, this will be uh, an interesting, uh, example of how we're going to use slot types inside of a bot and then we're going to build a slot that's going to hold the pizza size and we will see that the ordering the pizza is the intent so um i plan to build on this bot in the future and so let's just go ahead and and create our order bot here so i'm going to do order bot um, this is an example bot that will be um, in fact for something like the, okay um, and in, we're not this time uh, not like the introduction we're actually going to use a blank bot flow so we're not pre-configuring this one for any kind of banking operations or anything like that uh it'll be in english united states and so we'll create flow okay so if you saw the first video you'll notice that the default bot is a little bit different now there's no ask for intent there's no ask for slots or anything like that um because it's going to be up to us to determine what we want to do and so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to start at kind of it may not seem right, but I'm going to start from the bottom up and actually start with the pizza sizes and stuff like that first. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off and go here to slot types. Okay, and it says, hey, you, it looks like you haven't added any custom slot types yet. That's right, we haven't. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, I want to add a slot type. And we are going to say, this is the pizza size type. Okay. And, um, you know, up here it says, well, this is our slot type. What is it? Is it a list? Is it a dynamic list or regular expression? And all we're going to be covering today is list. So these are values, you know, they're like the allowable values for a pizza size type, and it's known at design time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say small, I just hit enter there. That's how I got it to accept the value. Medium and large. Um, here's something that's pretty cool too, is look at this right here, enter synonyms. So you can actually have synonyms for these values as well. All right, so let's say somebody says, well, I wanna order a tiny pizza, right? Oh, tiny, that could be a synonym for small. Um, how about for large, right? Let's do big. So I want to order a big pizza and that will really be the value we're going to get will be large for that, right? But someone can say big and it's a nice way to have these synonyms so that you don't have to, I mean, they'll all map to the right value in the end. Um, so one thing, you know, that we're looking at right now is we are looking at a pizza size type. I put type in the word, but um, it's a type declaration. Okay, so this is just saying, you know, for this type, these are the values I allow. This is not an actual thing that holds the pizza size, okay? It's just describing what the value can look like. So now I'm gonna go to this thing called slots right here. Okay, and this is where we're gonna go ahead and add the actual size slot. So this is like, if you're thinking about this sort of in terms of architect, like this would be a variable now, right? This is something which holds a value. Um, so within the um, natural language understanding model, we're going to create the slot and it's going to be called pizza size. Okay, And then guess what? The slot type 
Oh, right there. Pizza size type. Okay. And we're just going to do save. Okay. So what has happened here is we are now, we've got the pizza size slot um, defined within the natural language understanding model. Um, what's, of, what's of interest is like we sort of, we, we talked about this before in the previous video, but if we go over here to data, see, look, architect has created this slot dot pizza size variable. Okay, slot dot is something which is reserved it's not, as a flow author, you can't directly create these. Architect creates slot dot variables based on slots that you create here. Okay, so what does that mean naming wise? Yes, that means that slot names need to conform to the architect naming standards for variables. Like I can't go ahead and put a space in there. That's bad news, not gonna happen. Architect won't like that. So that's why I kept it all um, one word there with no spaces in it. Same thing, don't put periods in it. Um, don't start the slot name with a number, but it's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, it's just standard naming, um, variable naming behavior. So that's how you want to name your slots. And now you can see that we have the slot.pizza size variable available in the flow. Um, now let's go here. I'm going to click on intents. Okay. It says, it looks like you haven't created any intents yet. That's correct. We haven't. Like this is our blank file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an intent. That's kind of funny. Look, the watermark even says order pizza. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. And in fact, the intent names, you know, it's fine. We could do spaces in there if we felt like it. Um, you know, I can do order pizza like this with a space. In fact, eh, what the heck? I'll go with that. Okay, so here we are. Um, and it says, ah, look at it. it's leading us through this very nicely, isn't it? It says, you haven't added any utterances yet. Huh, let's read a little bit more about this. Utterances are sample phrases that a user would describe what they want to do. Aha, so I'm gonna add an utterance. And let's see, what would somebody say if they wanna order a pizza? Well, here's an easy one. I would like to order a pizza. Okay, enter. And maybe they wouldn't say that. I would like to part, just say order a pizza. Okay, now what's one thing that's just really kind of cool here is we can actually put part of, like the utterance can actually have information in there about other stuff we're going to be interested in in the pizza order. What are you talking about, Jim? Watch this. I would like to order a large pizza. Okay, so not just I would like to order a pizza, but here I would like to order a large pizza. Okay, when we're looking at this, we know what this means. Like we're saying, oh wow, they've given us a size, right? Um, but we have to tell the bot where to look for that. So I'm gonna double click on large. Ah, look at this, select slot. See, pizza size, cool. So if I can like give different utterances and if I were to like hook them up to slots, like when you're inside a bot asking like, what's your intent? I wanna order a large pizza. The bot doesn't have to say, well, please tell me the size of the pizza you wanna order because it's already been given to us. And that's what we're doing here, okay? so. I mean, I could put another utterance in here someday. Let's say we have ingredients and it would say, I would like to order a large pizza with pepperoni on it, right? And I could then put, I could double click on the pepperoni. I could hook it up to some kind of uh, pizza ingredients type, right? Or slot, um, this of a pizza ingredients type and it allows pepperoni and sausage, onions, you know, whatever. Uh, doesn't really matter, but the idea there being, okay, look, we're giving more information here um, within the utterance and the bot will be smarter because of that. So um, let's see here. I've now got the utterance. I would like to order a large pizza, order a pizza. I'd like to order a pizza. You know, this should be fine. Um, you know, when you were playing around with bots and you're developing them, 
you've got to have two utterances. So if you're kind of wondering like, hey, I just typed in what utterance and it's complaining, always give it two. You can give it more, but two is the minimum to be able to poke around and play with it. Um, awesome. So here we go. I've got this, I've got this intent defined, right? You know, here's our intent. Order pizza. We know there's a slot of pizza size, right? On it. Um, I'm gonna go back to my default bot. And now we're gonna go ahead and we'll create, um, we'll go ahead and just ask for the in intent. You know, we'll, we'll do our typical stuff here. Uh, <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna ask for intent, drag that out. And you see, it's already pre-configured to this, this question. What would you like to do? Yeah, that's close. That's almost what we want. What would you like to order? Okay. And by the way, sometimes you can help people um, help people out, you know, by giving them hints. So, what well, you know, you could say, "Well, would you like to order a pizza or pencils or flowers?" I don't know, but you know, you can put that in the wording to sort of help people out and you know vector them towards the right response or is it something that you'd be interested in hearing from them. So here we go. What would you like to order? Great. Ah, look at that. It's already got order pizza. Right. So here it is it's right here. See, it picked that up from the intents. Those are the intents that we defined over here and it's already got one. So if I wanted to, you know, if I defined a bunch of intents for a bot and I really didn't want to have a couple of them available, I could turn some off. I know, isn't that fun? I only have one in 10 here and I turn it off. Like, not cool. You must enable at least one in 10. See, it's already telling us that. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. But if I did have order flowers or reserve a car or book a plane ticket or something like that, right? Um, you know, you could turn them off, turn them on, depending on what you wanted to do. Um, so here we are, we're gonna order the pizza. And remember, as part of our pizza ordering, what is it that we wanted? We wanted that pizza size. So I'm gonna go ahead and I know, I can always drag it out from there, but I like doing it this way. I'm gonna do an ask for slot, okay. Pizza size, okay, see, what is the, please put your slot name here, right? Ah, okay, here we go. Um, pizza size, what is, Oh, medium or large. See, like that's a little hint. Now, remember, we did put in tiny and we put in big. So, you know, if somebody did say big, it'll figure it out and make it large. Um, that'll be the string value. So that's what this slot result is right here. That variable, when we're done here, see, this variable holds a selected slot value. And because the pizza size is a string variable, right? You know, we look at it here, it's a string variable. But we also know that it's of the, the pizza type, the pizza size type, and that's what will give those three different values. Um, let's see, what is the pizza size? So we asked for the intent, we're gonna ask for the slot. And remember, like typically, I know a lot of times we do have the loop where we say, you know, is there anything I can help you, anything else I can help you out with? Like normally we do that for now. Um, on this bot, it's going to be really straightforward. Okay, we're just going to, that's all this bot knows how to do. Okay, so just take a pizza order and the pizza order is just a size. So it's pretty wimpy. And then what we'll do is we'll exit from this flow. Okay, um, you'll notice a couple other things here though on the ask for intent. So if we don't receive, if the bot doesn't receive any input, you know, it says, hey, what do you want to order? And the person is just sitting there going, da, 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 da. you know, they're not giving us any kind of input. The bot can proactively say, hey, just speak a short sentence that describes your, your query. For example, check my account balance, right? Well, eh, let's not do that one. In fact, let's go, for example, I would like to order a pizza. 
Um, now, if somebody says, I would like to, um, I, know, I would like to um, go on a rocket into outer space, right? That's a no match. Our bot doesn't know how to handle that one. Okay, see this? Wording the bot will use when input is received, but is not a valid match. Um, I would like to order tennis balls. Well, this bot doesn't know how to do that. All this bot knows how to do right now is order pizza. So, um, you know, right here on a no match, that's what we're doing. We just say, you know, this is default text. You can change it up to what you see as fit, but it just says, tell me again what you would like to do. Um, in fact, let's say what you would like to order. That's a little better. Okay. Um, so there we go. I think that's probably good enough for what we want to do here. Um, something to remember is that, look, this is a variable, right? So pizza size, that's our slot variable, slot variable, right? Um, it's an input to the flow and it's an output from the flow. So this is how like the data can be returned back to callers uh, in the calling flow is the fact that we made this an output from the flow. In fact, we could actually take the pizza size as an input to the flow. So it's possible within the calling flow to say, hey, we can, we can already put in medium. Like, okay, we wanted to, that's fine. Um, and I guess the, like, the other thing too is just remember that slot dot variables here are just like other um, variables within architect, except for the fact you can't create them as a flow author. But let's say I do this. Flow dot my, or I'm sorry, I didn't mean flow dot. I just said that's, um, you know, my string value. Great. Okay, nobody's using this variable anywhere yet. That's what this, see, it's not used. That's all that means there. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna mark this as an input to the flow. I'm also gonna mark it as an output from the flow. This is another variable that simply is to uh, get a value to the bot flow. That's not part of the natural language understanding model, as well as we a value from the bot flow. Okay. okay, so I know we're not doing anything with this variable in the flow, but at the same point, or at the same time, I'm going to show you like when we have the calling flow and we reference this um, bot flow, uh, the nice part is we'll be able to have an input for it. And we will also have in the output section a place where you can bind a variable in the calling flow to this output variable. So this is input output. That's what these little direction doors mean. This is the input one. Here's your output, right? Um, and since there's no one that really uses this in the flow right now, I mean, yeah, I could do something with it, but I'm gonna just leave it alone for right now. So here we go, let's publish. Okay, and this is order bot. Um, so what we'll do next is I'm going to go back to the world of inbound calls and we're going to create an inbound call flow that simply calls this order bot. Okay. And, um, I know I, in the previous video in the introduction to bots, there is menus and all sorts of stuff like that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to say, you know, hello, welcome to the Genesis order bot. And then we're going to, um, call over to this order bot and let it do its thing. Okay, so let's go to inbound call. Okay, so here we are back at the uh, inbound call flow list. And now we're gonna go ahead and create an inbound call flow that calls our order bot. So I'm going to add, and I'm gonna say order bot caller. This is a demo inbound call flow that our order bot. Okay, I'm going to create this flow.
All right, it's our standard um, default template inbound call flow that you get when you create one in the UI. And what we're going to do is we're going to say hello. We're going to change this inbound greeting. We're going to say hello and welcome to the Genesis uh, demo order bot. And that's going to be our initial greeting. I don't want menus for this flow. I just want to have it go ahead and call the bot. So I'm going to add the task. We're going to call it virtual task. Okay. We click on these three dots here. We say set this as the starting task. Okay, so initial task is moved up here to the starting object of the flow. And I'm going to come down here. We don't need this main menu anymore. It's going to go bye bye in a car car. So let's click delete. It's gone. Okay, now let's take a look. Like, here's what do we want to do first of all? We're going to welcome somebody to our inbound call flow. Now, let's go here to the bot. Okay, remember that's the same as here. I can drag, right? Or I could just go here to the bot and say call the bot flow. And then it's going to say, well, which one do you want me to call? Say order, the order bot. And we're going to go over to supported languages. This is going to be this. This is that warning that or the arrow that says you can't use the Genesis TTS engine when you're working with bot flows. So let's go ahead and remove that. We're going to set the engine over to Google. I'm going to set that over to just. I'm just picking a voice there. Doesn't you know? Obviously you do what you need to. Um, so we're gonna start off, we're gonna call the bot flow. Now, here we go. Look at what happened. I picked order bot and see, remember these inputs that we had on the, the bot flow? There's that flow.my string value. Remember we set that one as an input and output. In fact, when I hover over it, look, there's the variable description. So that description I put in for the variable is visible to callers in the calling flow, which is really handy. So if you want to type, like tell people stuff about, hey, you should put this value here, make sure you do something or other or what with it, make sure it's all lowercase, I don't know. Whatever you want um, to have is the logic, uh, you know, or what, what the bot flow is going to expect for that variable input, you can put it here. Um, you know, it has to be a string, like we already know that, that's not, you define the variables as string in the bot flow. It needs to be a string value that's passed into it from here. But you know, you could say, well, um, you know, this could be the customer account number, right? And you could say, well, hey, pass in the seven-digit customer account number here as a string, or whatever. Doesn't doesn't matter. But um, that's what's really nice. And then you'll notice too, because we marked it as an output. See, it's also available here. Um, okay. I know that because we're doing this demo here, I want to, I'm going to look at this pizza size. Like I'm going to, I want to use this value when it comes back. So I'm just going to say pizza size. Okay. That's creating a task pizza size variable inside of this call flow. I named it the same thing as the slot name, which is fine. You don't have to, um, it's up to you, but again, see, for the pizza for the pizza size slot. Um, again, if the bot flow did change the value of the my string value, right? That variable inside the flow, and you wanted to set it to a value of the bot flow and return it to a caller, yeah, I'd go ahead and I could like bind it to a variable here, and then I could I have access to whatever the bot flow changed that value to. It's up to you. You're the one writing. You're the one writing all the logic here. Um, but, you know, this is the mechanics by which you can get some of that data into and out of the bot flow. Execution results, right? So, hmm, this is a string. If there was a problem, or, well, not, not always necessarily a problem, but, like, see, you know, here's one agent requested by user. So, you know, your bot said, oh, wow, they're saying agent. Like, they want some kind of agent escalation to happen here. So the bot exits, it returns to here. Yeah, you can go transfer this call um, over to a queue or to an agent directly. I don't know, uh, probably a queue, right? But the idea being, okay, 
you know, you have access to this exit return value. Now, uh, I'm actually most curious here about the intent. So see that order pizza? That's the intent that we defined in the bot. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. That is the actual string value you can use, but we need to bind it. So I'm gonna say the intent. Wow, there's a descriptive name, huh? But now after the bot flow is called here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of logic. Now, when you have bot flows that are, deal with lots of intents and you wanna check for different ones and whatever, most, most often people will use switch statements here because they just allow for more cases and whatnot. But like, I'm, I'm just gonna work with the, um, the pizza order, okay? And we're just gonna, let's see, it's this. And I'm going to say task dot the intent equals equals order pizza. So did the bot process a pizza order? Like that's the intent that we, if we get that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a play audio and just because the values that I use there are uh, small, medium, and large, that's I can read those out directly using a text-to-speech engine. So let's go ahead and do that. The size of the pizza that was ordered is, I'm gonna add data, and we're gonna say, um, see, there's that pizza size. And notice it's still red. Wait, no data playback. Ah, oh, that's right. So you got to go over here. Um, when you play back values, this is just like the communicate action inside of bot flows. But we're just going to go ahead and say, OK, take that string value, pass it off to the text-to-speech engine, and that that's great. We don't need any kind of barge in here. That's not necessary. We can keep it. I don't care. Um, and then at the very end, we will do another play audio because we're going to get ready to hang up here and we'll just say, thank you, period, goodbye. Um, then down here, we go to the toolbox and I'm going to do disconnect. Then we're going to hang up. Here, if we don't get anything, we'll just say, maybe next time you would like to play easy enough. So our bot flow only understands one thing right now. That's the pizza order. If we get that. Great. We're going to read back the pizza size they ordered. If not, we'll say, well, okay. Hey, maybe next time. Thank you. Goodbye. And we disconnect. All right. So let's publish this. Okay. Um, order bot caller. Let's go over to our UI. We're gonna we're gonna call this now. Okay. New phone call. Order percent twenty. Remember, if we're calling a flow name that has spaces in it, put percent twenties for the spaces are. Order bot percent twenty caller, and we're gonna do at local host. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and see if this thing works. Hello and welcome to the Genesis demo order bot. What would you like to order? I would like to order a pizza. What is the pizza size? Small, medium, or large? Medium. The size of the pizza that was ordered is medium. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, see, neat, huh? Um, that was kind of cool. So let's go ahead and let's test this out a little further. Like, let's take a look at, remember in the inside of our, um, inside of our order bot, remember that whole thing? I would like to order a pizza size pizza. So I should be able to say, in fact, let's go ahead and let's have this thing use a synonym. So, here is, here's our slot type, right? The pizza size type. 
we have large and big, right? And so when we in our intent, I would like to order a pizza size pizza. So I'm a, I as the caller now, I'm gonna call in and say, I would like to order a big pizza. And what we're gonna expect to have happen is on the caller, on the call flow side of things, we're gonna want it to say, you know, you ordered a large pizza. So here we go. Oh, let's just call. Hello and welcome to the Genesis demo order box. What would you like to order? I would like to order a big pizza. The size of the pizza that was ordered is large. Thank you. Goodbye. See, there we go. It didn't sit there and ask, or sorry, it meaning the bot. The bot didn't say, what's the size of the pizza you want to order? We already gave it, right? And so the bot picked up on it. So it didn't have to ask us what the size was. Like, this is cool. This is really neat stuff. Um, yeah, we'll keep building on some more of this in the future, right? Like we'll go ahead and start showing some more stuff and things that you could do within bots. But what we took away from today's like sort of tutorial is, all right, we, you know, the idea is we created a data, a slot type and we created a list type and that list type has certain allowable values. In the future, like there's other things we're gonna be able to look at. There's actual built-in types. And the built-in types can all can be things like numbers, right, or like the date, and um, you know they're very powerful. And today I just decided to go ahead and create a custom one because the pizza size thing was an easy way to do that. But you don't have to create a slot type for every slot. All right, that's not that is absolutely not something you have to do. It just so happened it worked out really well for the demo for what we were doing today, but. Right, like we got that information from the bot. The bot passed it back to the call flow. We read it back. We, you know, we did some conditional logic with a decision action. Um, you know, awesome. I, I mean, this is like really cool. Can't wait to like start doing another video and showing some more. Um, guess what? We, guess what we need? That's right. We need a Yeti five. Hey Yeti, give me five. All right. Well, thanks everybody. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button. And remember, there is no like button. Okay, well, we'll see you soon with another architect video. Talk to you later. See ya.